<coughs> okay, today I'm going to cover the urinary bladder and adrenal glands, two small parts. So urinary bladder, I will cover the anatomy, physiology, pathology and protocols. In anatomy, we will know the relationship. In physiology, we will learn the functions of the bladder. How does the bladder functions? And pathology, what are the pathologies with uh, patient will come to the doctors? And sonographically, how we will do the assessment about the pathology? So anatomy of the bladder will know location relations shape size wall thickness layers in wall okay let's talk about the <coughs> anatomy first of all bladder bladder is a sac bladder is a pouch bladder contains urine and bladder is connected with the kidney connected with kidney by ureter you can say by ureters so there is one bladder and the one bladder giving communication with two kidneys through the ureter and ureter is a pipe that ureter is a pipe if I draw the kidney here one-sided ureter so these are the kidneys this is the kidney so this is left kidney this is left ureter and this is bladder and this is urethra now as bladder is connected with the kidney and bladder is connected with the kidney by the ureter and bladder is connected with the urethra for the male urethra so this is female urethra and if I want to show you the male urethra so then male urethra will be like that and it will pass by the prostate gland so this is prostate gland so we are going to talk about the bladder so bladder location is in true pelvis what is the true pelvis is the bony pelvis so bladder is in the true pelvis is there any false pelvis yes 
then what is false pelvis? If you draw a line called linear terminalis from the sacral promontory, that means top surface of the sacrum to the posterior upper border of the symphysis pubis, then a space above the linear terminalis is false pelvis, below is a true pelvis. So female reproductive organs are in the true pelvis, then uh, bladder is in the true pelvis. So now, what is the relationship of the bladder? Bladder has couple of relationship. What is that relationship? So if you see the male bladder, so in the male bladder from the posterior part, you will see seminal vesicles on both sides for the man. So this is seminal vesicle. These seminal vesicles are two and these seminal vesicles are on the posterolateral aspect of the bladder. They ask this relationship. Seminal vesicles are two and this is the seminal vesicles where the semen get stored. And this is hypoechoic hypoechoic looking when it is filled in and this is posterior laterally to the bladder. That means seminal vesicles enter into the prostate gland by the back of the bladder. Okay? And the apex of the bladder okay let me go that is the location and I need to talk with the parts parts of the bladder okay so now This is bladder. We call it apex. We call this fundus. So fundus is posterior and this is body. And opposite of the apex is the neck. neck and for the male for the male the prostate gland is here so this is prostate gland so this is neck of the bladder and this is base of the prostate gland This is base of the prostate gland and the symphysis pubis is right here. Behind the bladder, behind the bladder for the female who is here. For the female, there is a uterus and behind the uterus, 
there is a rectum. So this is rectum and this is vagina. So now what is the relationship? Anterior to the bladder, this is the abdominal wall. And this is symphysis pubis. And bladder is a subperitoneal organ. What is subperitoneal means? This is Okay, bladder said this is peritoneum. This is peritoneum. And it is below the peritoneum. That's why it is known as subperitoneal organ. Now, this is bladder wall. Between the posterior wall and the uterus there is a space this is a potential space this is known as anterior cul-de-sac so this is anterior cul-de-sac is another name is vesico uterine pouch vesico means bladder uterus is uterus vesico uterine pouch now look at here this is another pouch this pouch is formed by the peritoneum and this pouch is in between the uterus and the rectum so this is known as recto uterine pouch this is known as vesico uterine pouch pouch is a cul de sac and this is recto uterine pouch or pouch of douglas pouch of Douglas. It is also known as posterior cul-de-sac. Okay? This relationship is very important. Why do I need to know this? Just understand. If there is a leakage of bladder, the urine will come out, right? So what the urine will go? either this pouch or this pouch if the female has a bleeding inside ectopic rupture ectopic pregnancy what the blood will go to this utero recto uterine pouch and this posterior pouch is more dependent that's why when patient is in supine position mm -hmm. it's a more dependent so fluid will go blood will go pass will go lymphatic fluid will go in the posterior cul-de-sac if patient is <coughs> having ascites and patient is standing, the fluid will go down between in to pouch. You're going to see this pouch. Okay? So we learn the parts. Now relationship we learn who is <coughs> anterior, who is anterior to the bladder, anterior abdominal wall, and below is the sympathetic pubis. Between the sympathetic pubis and the anterior wall, this space, they ask this question, this is a space of ridges. A space of ridges. And this is a potential space. What do you mean by potential space? Usually nothing gets accumulated over here unless there is a pathology. 
say this somebody has a bladder surgery so urine is coming right and urine will be collected over here you will see the anechoic area somebody might be traumatized after surgery the blood will be collected over here and that called hematocell or hematoma they may turn into abscess patient may come to the doctor doctor after surgery what happened there's a bump over here and it's so painful i'm so fever wbc count is very high then you will do the ultrasound you will see this is a complex mass complex cyst so then you will say oh this is an abscess then they will need to do the surgery and what is the other relationship anterior cul-de-sac and anterior cul-de-sac is built by the bladder and the uterus and the apex sorry the neck of the bladder is connected with the base of the prostate gland and the bladder has one opening here that is the neck through the neck and bladder will have two more opening by the ureter two more opening by the ureter and this looks like a trigon okay this looks like a triangle so its name is trigon so why is the trigon located they ask question it is in the posterior superior aspect of the posterior sorry posterior inferior aspect of the bladder and the trigon is formed by the two opening of the ureter two opening of the openings of the ureter and the opening of the urethra this three opening okay so you need to know this relationship so now shape bladder has no definite shape shape depends on the amount of urine if the urine is a small amount then shape would be very let me show you if there's a small amount of urine the bladder like this or this has view or bladder would be like this but when the bladder is filled with 400 cc 500 cc urine so then in sagittal view bladder will be like a boat shape boat shape in sags and for male what is this gland prostate gland and this is urethra this is urethra okay prostate gland and urethra you can see when the bladder is full you can see not very completely because the symphysis pubis is here and this symphysis pubis is making shadow that's why you cannot get the complete view of the prostate gland in trans abdominal because of the symphysis pubis it cast posterior shadow that's why in trans abdominally uh, we can assess the blood prostate gland is really enlarged or not but we cannot see the details of the zone of the prostate gland for that reason we need to do trans rectal examination good so shape is a boat shape in boat shape but in transverse view in transverse view it would be an square shaped square shaped 
Who make this square shaped? There are muscle. No, these two muscles. They will ask which two muscle on the lateral side will give the bladder shape like a square. Obturator internus. Obturator internus. These two muscles on the lateral side, it gives the shape like a square shape. Okay, this is SAS, this is transverse when the urine is small. Now the size, size of the bladder, the size of the bladder, normally, uh, seven hundred to eight hundred cc cubic centimeter when the bladder is super distended. But if the bladder is three hundred cc, we feel. for micturation. We feel like we need to go to the bathroom. Okay? So size, the highest size, but when 300 cc, we feel like we need to go. So now I will go with the wall thickness and the layers of the wall. We measure the bladder wall thickness This is anterior wall We measure outer to outer wall thickness and in distended condition it should be uh, less or equal to 3 millimeter okay this is the thickness we always measure the anterior wall we don't measure the lateral wall we don't measure the posterior wall the reason is that posterior wall unnecessarily will be more thickened the lateral wall may have the is refracting shadow. We might have is refracting shadow. That's why we don't measure the lateral wall, but we measure the anterior wall. Make sure there is a muscle layer here, peritoneal layer here, okay, and muscle sheath is there, echogenic. You might see. What type of artifact? A reverberation artifact. So this is reverberation artifact. If you see reverberation artifact and haziness, what you have to do? You have to use the harmonics. If you use the harmonics or a dynamic range or TGC, then you will see this reverberation is gone. Okay, so now this is the wall, and there are four layers in the wall. The wall has four layers. Four layers. Number one, serosa. 
means serous layer, outermost layer, number two, muscular layer, number three, sub mucosal layer, and number four, mucus mucus layer. Serous layer is echogenic and it's a fibrous layer, fibrous connective tissue. Okay, so then muscular has three layers. Muscular has three layers. Outer, middle, and inner. The middle layer is known as detrusor muscle. Detrusor muscle. And this middle layer has a role to make the sphincter, the inner sphincter and outer sphincter. The inner sphincter is involuntary. Sphincter means gate. Involuntary and outer sphincter is voluntary. That means this involuntary gate is out of our control. And this is under our control. That's why when bladder is really full, we said, okay, okay, I have to go, I have to go. Still we can hold. Who is holding? We are voluntarily tightening the outer sphincter. Then when we go to the restroom, we sit down, then we open voluntarily. Then PP starts. Okay, so now this muscular is a hypoechoic. And submucosal and mucosal are hyper echo hyper echo. This muscular layer, sorry, mucus layer, this mucus epithelium is known as transitional cell epithelium. That is the transitional cell epithelium. And why do I need to know all those layers? Keep that in mind. Urinary bladder, gall bladder. Why is the pathology? Either in the wall or inside. Right? In the gall bladder. When the wall is inflamed, we call it cholecystitis. But stone is inside the lumen. We call it gall stone is there. The polyp is with the wall. The tumor is with the wall. Then um,